It is Friday, July 31st, 2020, and this is your Three Gorgeous Damn Update. We've got four articles to get into today, including China goes all out to battle unprecedented floods along the Yangtze. Also, courtesy of Taiwan News, video shows extensive flooding in China's Xi'an. Also, courtesy of the paper.cn, China makes arrangements for Three Gorges Dam and continues to monitor drainage. And last but not least, courtesy of Forbes, this article broke a couple of days ago, but I feel like it's important to cover today. China food crisis, rising domestic prices, and large import purchases send a signal. We also have some new Twitter footage playing in the background of today's video. Let's get into it. And our first article of the day comes courtesy of CGTN.com. China goes all out to battle unprecedented floods along the Yangtze. China is stepping up efforts in flood control as continuous heavy downpours have lashed vast stretches of the country along its Yangtze River since June. As of Thursday, the Chinese People's Liberation Army and the People's Armed Police Force had dispatched troops to over 3,700 flood relief operations, helping evacuate more than 130,000 residents affected by the unprecedented floods, according to the Ministry of National Defense. And the footage you see in the background was posted to Twitter by a citizen and shows troops mobilizing in China. On to our next article, courtesy of Taiwan News. Videos show extensive flooding in China's Xi'an. At 3 p.m. on Thursday, the Xi'an City Weather Forecast Service issued an alert for 10 to 30 millimeters of rain over the next six hours for several districts of Xi'an, as well as nearby counties. The Weather Bureau also advised of sudden wind gusts between 6 and 7 on the Beaufort scale and lightning activity. Within an hour, much of Xi'an was suddenly hammered with heavy rain in many areas and strong winds. By 4 p.m., the Xi'an City Weather Service issued an orange warning of rainfall accumulation up to 50 millimeters over the next three hours. At 6.09 p.m., the Shaanxi Meteorological Bureau issued an orange warning of 20 to 40 millimeters of sudden bursts of rain and wind gusts between 7 and 8 on the Beaufort scale over the next two hours. Rather than posting images of the flooding, the Chinese state-run mouthpiece CN West described the torrential downpour as a sudden baptism of rain posting photos of rainbows allegedly captured by citizens across the city that day. However, based on video footage, there was more to contend with that day than mere rainbows. Multiple videos dated July 30th show many roads turned into rivers with water up to waist level. Some people can be seen using inflatable rafts and kayaks to get around, while others make ridiculous attempts to drive their vehicles when half submerged. Qian sits on the Wei River, which is the largest tributary of the Yellow River, already the scene of extensive flooding indicating that many communities downstream will be affected as well. Thank you for watching this video. If you are finding it informative, please consider giving the channel a subscribe. Now on to our next article, courtesy of m.thepaper.cn. And this article was written in Chinese. I'm going to do my best to run it through Google Translate and read some key points. I feel it's important to include it today because it's the most recently dated article I could find. And it's titled, Ministry of Water Resources Make Overall Arrangements for the Three Gorges Reservoir. On July 30th, the water level of the Yangtze River section below Shitao and Dongting Lake and Poyang Lake exceeded the alarm by 0.64 to 1.97 meters. The water level of the section below the Sanjian in the middle reaches of the Huawei River exceeded the alarm by 0.38 to 1.38 meters. The average water level of Taihu Lake exceeded the alarm by 0.65 meters, and the surrounding rivers in the network area, there are 35 stations whose water level exceeds the alarm by 0.01 to 0.76 meters. It is expected that in the next three days there will be moderate to heavy rains in parts of Sichuan, northern Anhui, northern Yangsu, Shandong, and northeastern Inner Mongolia, with some areas such as Sichuan and central Yangtze expected to have thunderstorms. In addition, the tropical clouds in the South China Sea will bring moderate to heavy rains along the coast of South China on August 1st. According to forecasts, there will be continuous rainfall in Sichuan and other places in the upper reaches of the Yangtze River in the near future, and the inflow of the Three Gorges Reservoir will continue to increase in later stages. The current reservoir water level is relatively high. The upstream inflow, the mainstream of the middle and lower reaches of the Yangtze River and the Dongting Lake and Poyang Lake, must be considered in an overall manner. 
With regard to factors such as water receding and navigation requirements, China hopes to further strengthen scientific and fine regulation, reduce the water level of the Three Gorges Reservoir as soon as possible, and prepare for subsequent floods that may occur. At present, the Ministry of Water Resources still maintains the third level emergency response for flood and drought disaster prevention. There are four inspection teams in the Yangtze River Basin to supervise flood defense work. And this article was actually printed on July 28th, but after I saw the Twitter footage you're about to see in the background, I felt like it was an important part of the issue that needed to be covered today. This comes courtesy of Forbes.com. China food crisis, rising domestic prices and large import purchases send a signal. Rising demand, floods, insect infestations, and rumors of spoiled inventories are all contributing to China's developing food-related woes. China has a food problem. To a nation whose leaders are old enough to have been directly impacted by the Great Famine, the seriousness of food shortages cannot be overestimated. China's burgeoning population, growing industrial economy, and expanding culture of consumerism are all contributing to a steady rise in demand for agricultural products. But agricultural production, lest anyone forget, is subject to the biblical forces of floods, fire, pestilence, and a host of other variables some of which are right now upsetting China's delicate food stability. The world's most populous nation will certainly not run out of food, but prices are rising and hints of tightening supplies are beginning to appear. Things may get worse before they get better. Three headline issues are challenging China right now. Floods, pestilence, and inventory problems. Above average rainfall and rising floodwaters are not just threatening to compromise China's gargantuan Three Gorges Dam. Rain and flooding are already disrupting rice, wheat, and other crop production in the provinces all along the entire Yangtze River. Perhaps this is why China, which holds just over half of the world's wheat inventories and is the globe's second largest producer of wheat behind the European Union, has already imported more wheat in the first half of 2020 than it has in the first half of any year in the past decade. In the month of June alone, China's single month import volume of wheat from all sources was the highest in seven years. According to the USDA, China is not only the world's second largest corn producer behind the United States, it will also hold a full 65% of the world's corn inventories at the end of this crop year. But last week press reports emerged citing the poor quality in some state-owned corn inventories, some of which are years old. The reports coincided with two large Chinese purchases of corn from the United States one of which was its largest purchase ever, 1.76 million metric tons, or 69 million bushels. Furthermore, corn prices in China have risen to a five-year high. Even though China has recently sold more than 1.4 billion bushels of corn out of state reserves, which would indicate there is a definite issue of some sort with China's corn supply. The USDA's Foreign and Agricultural Service points to an unusually early and intense infestation of fall armyworm in June as the likely cause of China's current corn angst. It is worth noting that year to date, China is on pace to make its highest rate of US soybean purchases since 2014, and China's June imports of soybeans from Brazil were up a staggering 91% from the year prior. China is aggressively buying soybeans and soybean products to feed its expanding swine herd, the world's largest. In fact, the USDA projects that China will import from all sources a record total amount of soybeans next year. Overall, the past few months have seen China increase its imports of pork, soybeans, soy meal, wheat, corn, sorghum, and prepared foods from the United States and elsewhere. China can't feed itself. It needs the world's help, especially if its domestic production and inventories are compromised. It's too early to gauge the ultimate severity of China's total food woes, and it's highly unlikely that the ripple effects of China's food issues will cascade through the global food chain. But right now, Chinese leadership has food security as a top concern. And I think this is a good place to wrap up today's video. I hope that you found it informative and check back soon for more content.